Yes, hello, Dickie, and I hope that you have a more comfortable ringside seat than we have at the moment. We're on ice at the Hallen Stadium and in the dark, too. But uh, Ali, as you know, has given up predicting, but tonight he's made an exception for us. Uh, on the way to the ring, he held up one finger, so one round is his prediction, which means that uh, nobody can afford to take their eyes off the ring. But I think trying to win in one round just might be easier said than done because uh, though this man, Ali, uh, in fact, who used to trade as Cassius Clay, has correctly named the winning round 18 times, Jürgen Blinn has never been stopped. Now, we're just waiting for the spotlights to parade the entry of the gladiators. They've been warming up in the tunnels there. There you go. Now, just right, the uh, soccer teams would come up on this ice stadium. And only half an hour ago, I was out checking up on Muhammad Ali, and he was out walking in his heavy boots in his tracksuit. And there's Jürgen Blinn with this very large-sized manager in front of him, Fritz Weiner, who doesn't think he'll be able to negotiate the steps. Well, let's hope that Blinn can make them OK and get out the same way under his own steam. So Jürgen Blinn, then, he's never been stopped in 42 fights. Looks as though they're already gloved up for action. And they're blowing these Swiss bugles and uh, horns and cowbells at the back of the hall there. And you'll hear probably this tremendous welcome for Muhammad Ali. But there you are, surrounded there by a posse of German managers and agents, I think probably making sure that he doesn't run away at the last minute. Certainly must be tension time for Jürgen Blinn, facing, many people believe, the greatest heavyweight in history. British viewers, of course, remember Jürgen Blinn fighting Joe Bugner at Wembley, and he lost a narrow 8-15 eight, eight, rounds championship decision for the European title, although it was disputed. Well, there's certainly the crowd are with Jürgen Blinn. I'm wondering whether he wishes he were with the crowd at this moment. before he makes his entry. And this really amazing boxer, because he was out road walking only a half an hour before he came into the ring with heavy boots on and in a tracksuit. And he said, I like to do this, I can unwind, there's no strain on me. And there he is, the man of the moment, led by Drew Boudini Brown, that rather noisy second of his. The best known face in the sporting world, some say in the entire world, getting a tremendous welcome from the Swiss crowd. And they really got to fight these supporters off as he pushes his way through. He's a little angry that he's being pulled around a bit. Angelo Dundee there in the white sweater trying to make a way for his fighter. And he's coming almost around to our commentary position. survive the crowd battering can he survive what Blinn has to offer and this long red robe similar to the one that he entered the ring at Wembley in 1963 when we first saw him in Great Britain that memorable evening when Henry Cooper put him on the floor and I must say he's looking in tremendous shape 
does he really mean it when he says he's going to try and take Jürgen Blin out in one round? He says that he's been criticized in America for showing mercy in his last fight in November against Buster Mathis, a fight that you saw on ITV. And then he's pretty angry about that and he says, no, I'm going to get down to work tonight because I still regard myself as the greatest. Now we have had a dramatic change of referee here today. Teddy Waltham from England, the retiring secretary of the Board of Control, was supposed to referee, but the Blink Camp made an objection, and now they've agreed to have Sepp Surter, a 55-year-old police sergeant from Bern as the referee, and Teddy Waltham to be one of the three judges. The three judges will call the score if needed after the scheduled 12 rounds, and the referee does not have any vote. The British promoter in the ring there, Mickey Duff, the reason he's in there is to act as the German-speaking interpreter for the referee for the Muhammad Ali camp. One thing for sure about Ali and Blin, they're looking in better shape than most people I've seen around here after the festivities, because they've trained right through. And Ali is 100 kilos, which is 15 stone, 10 pounds. That's seven pounds lighter than in his fight against Mathis only last month. And Blin is 90 kilos, that's 142 pounds. So he's conceding 22 pounds. He's uh, 14 stone, two pounds. Well, just to recap now, on that weight, I should have said 198 pounds, Glenn, which is 14 stone, 2 pounds. And he concedes 22 pounds. and final national anthem.
action moments now, and now for the official introductions, as if you don't know the difference. You, uh... So now, is he really going to go out there and score in one round, and if you're suffering and being a bit bleary-eyed, as quite a lot of us are here, we've arranged for Ali to be wearing the white shorts, so you'll have no trouble identifying him. vivid scarlet dress there of his manager Boudini Brown looked like Father Christmas when he came in there Muhammad Ali I must say although the Muslim sect doesn't recognize Christmas until February the 25th Saviour's Day well there it is this warm-up routine now he's looking in tremendous shape 15 stone 10 pounds which when you recall is less than a stone heavier than he weighed way back in 63 when he first fought Henry Cooper in the non-title fight at Wembley Final call over for Jurgen Blin, the Dutch agent in the corner there, Hank Ruling. Former butcher from Hamburg then, chancing his luck. And the referee, Sepp Sutter, S U T E R, from Switzerland, and the judges from Geneva, Frankfurt, and Teddy Waltham from England. That's Bruno Vecina, Arturo Werner, Teddy Waltham, and here we go. And it's a very small ring. I paced it out at about 17 feet square. This is one of the smallest rings that Ali has ever fought in. Well, there's one thing the German is not short on courage. I've seen him fight several times and he's always been in there battling. But can he overcome now? The weight, experience, class of the self-styled greatest. And a right hand punch there, that really shocked Blint to his boots. Yes, he means it, Ali, there's no fooling around with this one. In one minute of the opening round, he just tried his chin for size. have a lot of trouble trying to leap in with those hooks being outreached the referee didn't allow Blim much leeway at close quarters there he really pulled them apart quickly There's no chance of the carrying stuff going on here. Ali is trying to take him out with a minute to go in the opening round. A little bit out of distance, as you might expect. never been stopped or knocked out lost eight drawn six <laughs> well that's the referee there Serga looking over for some help and uh, He's talking as usual, the Louisville lip, but in fact he, could, he couldn't bring out that first round uh, prediction as he thought it would. He may have been kidding, this fellow likes to send people up, 
and he may have been kidding, but he could have fooled me by the way that he threw that right hand early on and then tried to measure Blinn with a left hook. And there's Blinn not looking too worried about it. He's obviously got over the nerves when he was at the way in. He looked almost in awe at Ali, I thought. So round two, and it looks like Ali's coming out early for work. He's having trouble punching down at Blinn to get his range. Scheduled for 12 rounds. Certainly way up on his toes there. No wonder he's been running up the local mountain there. And Blinn chancing his luck with that left swing. Can it come off? This is the way uh, Henry Cooper tagged then Cassius Clay's chin. opening round I thought that Ali came out really trying to take care of Blinn right away Blinn took his best punch and seemed to feel better for it he came back right away realizing that uh, perhaps he wasn't the demon king after all okay, there he's trying that left hook for size and it's working Blinn is in there pitching and the minute gone then in the second round does see a bit of the Ali magic there when he backs off on the ropes and pulls away. He makes his opponents flounder out of distance. And he says, reputation's at stake. I want to prove to the people in America that I can finish off opponents. He said, I think the British still believe in me. And there's a call now from Ali's corner. Don't play with him. Get to work. face reddening now under this constant left hand of that black glove 15 stone 10 pound behind that left jab there it is there it is again just measuring will he will he now shoot the old-fashioned one-two punch the one the left hand followed by the right hand punch let Blinn work at close quarters at all. He's very strong indeed, Ali. Very powerful athlete. I don't think they're approving of the referee breaking it up uh, as quickly as that and also Ali leaning on his opponent, shoving him off there. And another short right hand punch. They're the ones to watch. Oh, and he just made Flynn fall over himself. He just knew exactly how to pull his body back. This is Jack Johnson stuff. At the end of round two. Well, there he is. He seems to be satisfied with it, sitting there like a man dismissing the office cares and talking to Angelo Dundee there, his longtime trainer. Just to recap on the statistics, 34 fights, Muhammad Ali lost only one, of course, to Joe Frazier last March in that great showdown battle. And he's either knocked out or stopped 26 of those opponents. And he's coming up 30, it's 30 next month. Jürgen Blinn then, he's 28, next butcher from Hamburg, 42 fights, lost eight, drawn six. Not much of a puncher because he'd only won seven inside of the distance and won by disqualification, but he's never been knocked out. Well, there's the man looking for business. So round three then, will we have this stubborn resistance by Jürgen Blind to last 12 rounds? That really will be a turn up for the book and we'll have to call on the three judges scores. The referee's vote, as I said earlier, doesn't count. Stop. And the referee just saying, Blinn, you're hanging on a bit when I call break there. Now, 
Ali really working up a sweat. It's absolutely glistening on his body. Blin's face reddening now, but he's really having a go. Full marks. He's grazed his elbow, of all things. I don't think I've ever seen that in a fight before. When Blin fell over, missed that punch and tumbled into the ropes, he grazed his right elbow. the old Ali magic. He started to put punches together a bit now. He isn't backing off in the usual fashion. Well, everybody could see that one coming. Certainly Ali could. for this fight. That's the first time I ever recall that in a European fight. But it was agreed when they accepted the Swedish referee, the Swiss referee, that he could not disqualify either fighter for low punches or accidental butting. Well, if this head work and Arm work gets a bit too rough. There's always a chance that Ali could get cut, and he knows it. And he's putting his punches together now, and he means it. But Blin is fighting back. Blin is really going for him, but he's taking everything on the chin. And I think they were both relieved to hear that. your breath on the finish of that round there this is Jürgen Blin and I must say feeling pretty satisfied with himself he, he had a great fight with Jose Urtain in Madrid I saw that fight and I thought Blin defeated uh, Urtain but they gave it to the Spaniard Swiss crowd really chanting and going crazy with the possibility anyway that the German could win. The last German who fought Muhammad Ali, Karl Mildenberger in 66, gave him a lot of trouble for 12 rounds. And despite the defeat by Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali still says that Karl Mildenberger gave him his toughest fight. Can we have this again now with Jürgen Blin? As opening rounds then, Ali just trying for size, coming out fast, predicting a first round that didn't come up for him. And now he realizes that Blin has probably got a bit more to offer than he thought. And he's certainly shrugging aside Blin, having to give away 22 pounds. I know he's due for the Ali shuffle, I think, any moment. It looks to me as though he's loosening up now. the equivalent of for a seat at ringside here in Zurich and I think they're pleased they're getting their money's worth this really is the dancing master at work now he's going to this is what he often does he tries to tire an opponent out as much by missing his landing just sheer effort to tire the German. 
but he knows he cannot take Glenn out exactly when he wants to, so he's biding his time and seeing how it goes. Just looking back, I think probably Blinn's one of the only fighters other than Frazier that I've seen stand and trade and really punch back with him, as Henry Cooper also did on the two occasions they met. You have to take the fight to Ali to have any chance. An amazing win. Ali shifts the seven pounds now that he had in the Mathis fight in November. What a difference it makes to him, the way he can use the ring. It's very big, he, he can hardly get any more weight off. He thinks, he says, I'll always be big now, I've given up, I'm not 21 anymore. blood on uh, Blinn's thigh there, which is actually coming from his elbow. So that's the only sign of blood so far, as Hank Ruling, the Dutch agent there, is working. You have this electric fan, the old-fashioned seconds, and my father and uncle were well-known professional seconds, always flap the traditional towel, but there they are. They've got all, every mod con now for the big fight. He looks more or less satisfied with his night's work, Muhammad Ali. 11 years ago this week, actually, that he began as a pro against Tani Hansaker. I wonder whatever happened to him in Louisville. He was uh, 1960 Olympic light heavyweight champion. That was 12 stone, 10 pounds, back in row. So we're into the fifth round. And although Blinn's face now is looking a little marked, there's a pretty fair chance, say, the speculators around the ringside here of him going the full distance. Can this happen? Or will he stand for this softening up process of Ali, who really wants to look good for this fight? He, he feels pretty bitter at the criticism that he had against Mathis. He said they really crucified me in America because I was cruel with Ernie Terrell and Floyd Patterson. And they did the same when I was kind to Mathis, but I'm not showing any tonight, and he means it. Oh, yes, the right-hand punch. This is the one he teed off in the first round, in this fifth round. Oh, this is a brilliant Ali now. This is really back to his best. Smudge of blood on the cheeks there of Flynn. He certainly takes some punishment. He's just cut, grazed under both eyes. Very puffy. He's really busting the German up. That ramrod left hand there. Looks to me as though if this keeps up, he'll stop the German on his feet. He'll have at least some pride in being able to do that. If he does, it's the first time he'll have failed to finish a fight. That really was a great combination he put together there for about 30 seconds.
Well, when Ali uh, just right. raised that one finger and predicted this first round knockout, I said, well, you, you've got to be good to do it because this fellow can take stick. And he just said, oh, you think so? Well, and I looked a bit surprised. I think he's beginning to believe me. around his face at the end of round five. Well, these are what professional seconds call good cuts because they're not closing his eyes very quickly. They're not right on the eyebrows. And these experienced corner men with the and staunch it there with the adrenaline, there'd be no problem. It's just a question of how much he can take around the face. And then they're using the grease there just to stop the, they're only really grazes, they're not very serious. So Angelo Dundee there, the old master, who calls the shots, as they say in the American game, for Muhammad Ali, who's now graduated, as it were, from a very boisterous Cassius Clay to a very mature Muhammad Ali, who talks about the intoxication of life. So round six then, the halfway stage. I'm wondering now how Clay's corner are calling this. And see if we can just get a word from Angelo Dundee. Yeah. So you now you can hear the Stick, corner baby. advice from Angelo. It's going like we want it. He's, uh, this fellow's an awkward sort of a fellow. He's looking to counter him with a good left hook when he comes in, leaping at him. And that's what's been hurting the fellow. Guy's a very game, durable guy. I think he's going to get to him in a couple more rounds. Thanks, Angie. Well, there you are, straight from the horse's mouth, and that's what these trainers are saying while the action's on. slow job now Ali he's obviously let the punches go in the previous round and now he's just going to bide his time now and do a slow destruction job if he can but the whole time he's got to watch Blinn with this leaping in wild hook he's only taken three counts in his career Jürgen Blinn I'm wondering whether now he's falling or whether he hurt him it's really hard to tell with this fellow it looked a good potty punch to me, the same sort of punch that Carl Mildenberger hurt Ali with in Frankfurt back in 66. And no matter what year it is, they do hurt. So there's a minute to go in this round. And it looks to me as though in trouble, he's, he seems to be blowing a bit. He, Probably come out in the seventh round and do his dancing act again. But oh, he's almost caught up in the rope trick there. That's, uh, that's a dangerous one. position went wrong and we had to have three sets of scales in before we could finally weigh these two heavyweights and they finished up on the home bathroom scales and just to repeat that we think they weighed 15 stone 10 here Ali against 14 stone 2 blip they are just working away the 
swellings a little bit there. The fellow on the outside of the rope is the German manager. And the man inside is uh, the Dutchman. And there's news from the clay corner, or the Ali corner, that they think their man's genuinely tired. So, round seven then. And we're wondering now, is it really true? Is he falling to pieces a bit? This fellow, Ali, has set such high standards that anything shorter than that always looks as though he's going back a long way. But if Flynn really throws one out of the blue, it will probably be the biggest upset since Custer and Sitting Bull.
trample here. This fellow creates pandemonium like you have never seen in your life. It really is fantastic. And I'll tell you, we need danger money commentators getting up there with this mad rush. But what can you do when you're dealing with the greatest? up in the ring as well now an amateur one these supporters are getting very excited a little over excited as the whole of the mixed crowd here there's a great deal of our lee supporters Good night to you from the Pandemonium at the ringside in Zurich.